Hello, hello. Happy live. Happy Wednesday. Happy milder weather we've been having lately. I am going to do my normal. Thank you guys for popping on. I am going to answer any of your guys' questions that you write in the little window there. I will also answer some questions that have come up during the week. And if you have anything that you want to say or state or, again, ask, feel free to write it. I will also do some happy news and real estate updates, okay? So that is my normal. So I will get started with the first question, which is from Greg and Cindy and Barry. So Greg and Cindy and Barry said, with shared hallways, elevators, and common spaces, have you found the desire gone down for condos since COVID? Um, thank you, Greg and Cindy, for asking. So I'm actually in a condo right now. And I bought it um, the October, October 2020, so obviously during COVID. So I bought during COVID. But the people that lived here said they want to, you know, move closer to their grandkids, whether that was true or not, or maybe they were paranoid of COVID. Uh, everybody's different, right? So some people are super masked and won't share um, an elevator with somebody. Other people are fine and, you know, their mask is down to here or what have you. So I think everybody's different. I know that some people will ask like the circulation system. So is the furnace just for the one unit or the um, whatever kind of heating it is? It's not a furnace at mine, for example. But they'll just ask, is it the venting alone to that one unit or does it go to like other units and that kind of thing? But it was more like at the beginning when people were still washing their groceries and stuff, it wasn't as popular and condos were down. But then as the prices skyrocketed of freehold homes, then as did the condos because then people couldn't get into freehold homes. So they were going to condos as opposed to renting. So at least they feel like they have their foot in the door in some aspect, shape or form. Okay. Um, I can't see that, but hi, I think it's Amy and Becky. Thank you guys for popping in. Um, feel free to ask any questions if you guys want. Otherwise, I will just jibber jabber and answer some questions that have come in through the week and do my normal like happy news and real estate updates. Okay. Um, so a couple was out for their anniversary dinner and it was in a place called Cape May, which is in New Jersey on the ocean front. And he ordered um, a dozen, not oysters, what's it? Clams, but I think it's the same thing. And he bit on something. He thought it was like his tooth. Turns out it was an 8.8 .8 millimeter pearl and um, it's worth like thousands of dollars. So it was a happy surprise for their 34th wedding anniversary. They've been going to that restaurant for years. Um, never found a pearl before, nor has anybody <laughs> that works at the restaurant. So it was just cute. Instead of selling it, they are going to get it made into a necklace for this lady's anniversary. Again, they've been married for 34 years. Again, I just like happy news. Obviously, we can find lots of sad news and we know what's going on in the world um, as well as locally. So I just like some happy, more uplifting news. So the next question comes from Jocelyn. I might say that wrong. Sorry, Jocelyn in Alcona. So Jocelyn in Alcona says, um, we live in a bungalow with a crawl space and have toyed with the idea of lifting it and adding a basement or selling it and going somewhere with a basement. What would you do? Uh, thank you, Jocelyn, for asking. So to be honest, I would have a realtor out and let's just say they say the value of your home. I'm just making this up because I don't know your square footage and that kind of thing. So let's just say they currently say it's 700, right? And then um, have them bring, you know, the info with them or what have you with a basement. So let's just say they say with the basement is 950. So obviously 250,000 more. But if a contractor can do it for you for 80, then, you know, it makes sense. But if a contract's, contractor is saying like 325, then that doesn't make any sense, right? So I would have them do your numbers and if, for example, it was even like um, that 250 example, for example, so it's 700 now worth 950 as a basement and a contractor is going to cost you 250, then it's just up to you. If you're like, hey, I like the rest of the house. I like the idea of, um, you know, putting in exactly what we want and the certain type of flooring downstairs. And we love the lot. We love our neighbors. We love maybe you have deeded beach access or something kind of up to you. You have to weigh the odds, but I would definitely check how much it is to do it and how much it'll add. Because if you are into it for 1.1, it's only worth 950. I definitely would not do it. Um, but thank you for asking. And sorry if I said your name wrong. Um, so the next thing was, I jumped ahead. Sorry. Um, let's see. Oh yeah. Something you might look into. Obviously everybody knows gas prices are crazy high as our home prices. So there was 22 university students in um, the Netherlands and they made a, um, elect not electric, a solar completely um, powered car. And it's actually like a little home. So it's um, like an RV and it has a bedroom, it has a kitchen, has a living room, it has a bathroom, a shower, etc. And they um, drove it 1800 miles. I don't know what that is in kilometers, just to make sure that it worked as well as like advertising to show people, you know, there's different types of RVs that they can buy. 
And so if it's a sunny day, they can go 730 kilometers, which is about from Timmins to London, about eight hours. And if it's a cloudy day, they can basically go from um, North Bay to um, London. So it's crazy amount of time that they can drive with that car. And again, it's just not necessarily news, but kind of news if you don't want to take gas <laughs> prices. Um, next question comes from Jesse in Moonstone. So, um, hi Brad, how are you? Hi Craig, thank you guys for popping in. Um, Jesse from Moonstone said, why do you think lower offers sometimes get picked over higher offers? I asked because it happened on my street lately, but now we feel they set the bar lower than it should have been. Um, thank you, Jesse, for asking. I don't know if you asked your neighbor why they took the lower offer, but we've before had people, for example, lined up with their closing date. So say they've already bought somewhere and they're like, hey, we need April 1st, for example, and the highest offer had November 17th. And they're like, we don't want November 17th. We don't want to have to bridge mortgage that whole time. We want that April 1st. So it could be because of that. Maybe they met the people and they were nicer. Maybe they met the top offer and they were rude. Um, maybe there was like a story with it. Maybe they sent a picture in of their family and a little blurb about, you know, them loving the neighborhood or their parents living close by or something, something. And maybe they like it for that reason. Um, it's usually though because of closing date, uh, cause obviously most people it comes down to money, but if it's not money, it usually has to do with closing date or deposit. So maybe somebody has offered them a million dollars with only 5,000 down and somebody else has offered them 997, but with 200,000 down. So they take that, you know, cut in what they're going to make, but then they get a way bigger deposit because then they just feel like the sincerity of the client is there. And in case anything were to happen, then they have more to fall back on. Okay. Thank you for asking. Um, I have one more thing before I do real estate. So there were two guys out in BC and they were basically an hour east of Vancouver and they were hiking. Don't ask me how, but they fell down this, um, escarpment thing and they were like down in this waterfall area and could not get back up so as they were you know yelling to people etc there was these five younger guys that were going by and they were Sikh so they have you know the turbans and and head pieces and anyways after like 10 minutes of them contemplating what to do they ended up tying all of their um, turbans together and it equaled about 33 feet and they were able to like hang over things and basically uh, pull the guys back up so I just like that because I like happy things. So next we're going to get into real estate. Again, if you guys want to ask questions, feel free. If not, I will just jibber jabber. Okay. So what has COVID done to majority of places during, um, you know, I was going to say during lockdown, but um, done to the real estate market since it has started, you know, let's just say March 17th, I think of when everything like closed schools wise or whatever. So most places it has doubled uh, their sales price. So let's just say they were selling homes for 400,000. Now they're selling around eight. Um, obviously depends on the area, but for example, I'll do local examples, but for example, in Windsor, this was not completely double, but they went from 386 um, in February, 2020 to 704. Again, not completely double but it is 82% higher, okay? So that's in Windsor. And if we break down the years from uh, February 2020 to 2021 to 2022 in Windsor, they went, it's weird because the one's exactly 100, so they went 386, 486, 706, okay? So crazy amount um, for that. I said 706, it's 704, I lied. Um, so locally, I will kind of jump all over and do kind of Canada, not kind of, I'll do Canada parts and I will do local parts. So. Um, locally though, so Simcoe County, uh, in February, the average sales price was over a million dollars, a million ninety three nine oh nine to be exact. So let's just say a million ninety three, which was up 42% from February of last year. So, uh, that's again, all of Simcoe. Now, if we look just at Barry, February, 2022 over 2021, February, the average sales price is 951 and change. I don't like the change part and that's up over 35%, okay? 951, the average sales price in Barrie in February up 35% over last year. Hi Sam, how are you? Thank you for popping in. Um, okay, so out of Barrie, so if we're doing in Simcoe County, but we're not counting Barrie, but we're counting Oro, Innisfil, Essa, Springwater, etc. I forget Sam, if you were the one last week that asked about um, Friday Harbor, I don't remember, I think it was a Sam. But um, thank you for popping on and thank you, Josie, for popping on and Graham. Um, so out of Barry, not counting again, or sorry, out of Jeepers Creepers. In Semco County, not counting Barry, the average sales price was over 1.2 million. So 1.204, 149. 
1.204, let's just say 1.204, it's the average sales price in Simcoe County, not counting Barrie, and that is up 41.9% over February 2021. Um, so although there was the rate increase last year of a quarter point, so 0.25, that has not been the main thing that um, is making things unaffordable for people. So it's actually the house prices. So let's just say, for example, a townhome before two years ago was 500, and now a townhome is um, 650. So 500 two years ago, now 650. To be honest, they're not even 650, but I'm just using that as an example because we're not talking about just Barry. So 500, if you had 50,000 down, which was 10%, and now you're buying for 650, you still have that 50,000, for example. Back then, your mortgage would be $2,008 a month, okay? $2,008 a month, now it's 2949 so yeah, there's a teeny bit of interest, you know, difference, but it's basically instead of buying for 500, buying for 650. So that's where the main difference is coming from. Okay. Um, oh, cool, Sam. I have a good memory. <laughs> Some things. Um, okay. So again, close to $2,000 a month and close to $3,000 a month. Again, it's not, you know, the interest per se, even though a tiny bit of it is, it's more just because you're buying at a higher purchase price and you're buying in. Okay. So um, what else? So Toronto Homes up. Toronto homes were up over 80,000 from um, February 2022 from February or January 2022, okay? Um, so the average sales price was up 354,000 if you went February 2022 from February 2021. I'm sorry for like all the numbers and stuff, but that's up over 35.9%. And again, that was in Toronto, okay? Again, I do locally Toronto, I do Canada, I do a bunch of things. Um, Vancouver was up 20.8% over uh, last year's February, which was 226,000. Their average sales price is up. And um, there were more listings. So depending on what you look at, some things will say more listings, some th things will say less. Jeepers, I don't think I've ever not had my words so much. Um, but it just depends if you're looking in Simcoe County, where you're looking, and sometimes it'll say, um, you know, townhomes, versus detached and sometimes like there's no condos or there's no semi-detached, etc. So it just depends what you're looking at. Um, but year to date, so that is counting January, counting February and counting a little bit of March. The average sales price in all of Simcoe County is still over a million dollars, so a million sixty-six and change, uh, 329 to be exact, which is up 42% over last year's um, average, okay? Um, sorry, let me see here. Um, more listings I see up this month. Yes, there is more listings. And to be honest, um, Sam, so because there's more listings, they are there are less showings through. So let's just say a home before that was listed for five ninety nine dollars might get 30 to 50 showings. Now it's getting 10 to 18 showings because the buyers have more to choose from. Um, uh, Calgary, yeah, I don't, we have somebody two days ago we went to them and they're either gonna go Calgary or, um, or sorry, they're gonna go to Edmonton or Winnipeg, um, but basically just because they can buy there so cheap. I don't know if you can work remotely or what have you. Um, and I also don't know how much they go up, right? So sometimes I hear certain places are down, whereas obviously Simcoe County keeps going up every year. So I don't know um, their stats only sometimes do their stats. Hi, love, how are you? Hi, Eric. Um, so I don't know it fully, but I could always refer you to an agent out there to tell you exactly. Um, Pre-construction. Yeah, you could do that. But again, I would want you to do your research wherever you were looking, Sam. If it was in Vancouver, if it was in Edmonton, et cetera, um, as long as you do your research, so I'm happy that you have done so before you purchase. Um, happy Wednesday, Sai. I think I answered all the questions. I'm gonna go back to my stats. Okay, so I just said the year-to-date average in Simcoe is over a million dollars, a million sixty-six. Uh, which is 42% higher, okay? So year to date, if we do just Barry, it is 951,000 and change. Again, that is February, 2022 versus February, 2021, okay? So it's up 35.3% in Barry. And when I was saying about like, some people are saying numbers are up, some people are saying numbers are down. So there was some numbers that were down, which were the number of homes sold in February, okay? They were down 21.4%. However, as I'm sure you know from either listening to me or seeing anything, uh, that the sales prices were not down, okay? So um, last year, 836 homes had sold in Simcoe County, and this year only 657. So obviously less were sold, but last year the average sales price was 746,000, and this year it's a hundred, not a hundred, a million and six. 
Okay, again, and change 432 to be exact. But basically 746, 746,000 to a million and 6,000. So yes, less homes sold, however, for way more money. Okay, so 21.4% less homes sold, but for 34.9% more. So you can go sell last year if you want when more people were selling. However, you're gonna get way less money. So I don't think you want to do that. Um, so what will a local uh, house set you back? So I'll break down like semi-detached, detached, townhomes, condos, etc., in different local Simcoe boards around this year. If you guys want any other areas, feel free to write in the chat. And I see that some people wrote stuff, but I'll just read this first and then do it, okay? So in Barrie, um, and again, this is the average sales price in February, okay? So in Barrie, the average sales price was a million ninety-two for a detached home. Again, there's change in there, but I take out the change, which was up 38.7%. I wanted to make sure I didn't step on my dock. Um, so a semi-detached home, so it's just attached on the one side. The average sales price in February was uh, over 862000 which is up 37%. Uh, and again, this is in Barrie from February 2022 to February 2021. A townhome wasn't much cheaper. It was 817000 the average sales price, which is up over 30%. And then condos were 627000 change up 34.9%. Okay, so that's Essa, or that was Barrie. Jeepers. In Essa, a detached home. Good thing I don't get frazzled easy. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Um, in Essa, a detached home, the average sales price was a million ninety seven, which was up over 32%. And the average town home there was 868, which was up over 44%. There were no semi-detached solds in February and there were no condos sold in February. So that's why I'm not saying them. In Innisfil, the average detached home in February is 1.185 and change, which is up over 27%. And the average townhome was 1.142 in Innisfil, which is a crazy amount for a townhome. So I'd like to see that townhome is probably beautiful. Uh, in Aurelia for Mr. Eric, um, the average detached home in February 2022 was 834, up 28.1% over last year. The average townhome was over 752,000, which was up over 49%. And the average condo was 567,000, uh, up over 23%. Okay. Um, again, if you guys have questions, feel free to ask. Um, hi, Bobby. Thank you for jumping on. Hi, Christy. Hi, Rebecca. I think that's Lisa. Thank you guys for popping on. Um, so in Wasega Beach, the average detached is now over 920,000, and that was up over 29% over last year. Then the average, there was no semi-detached, by the way, in Wasega. The average townhome was up over $638,000 to buy it, which is up over 12%, uh, which is actually a low jump compared to most of them. And then the average condo in Wasega Beach was over 597,000, up over 47%. So that's more common to see like 20, 30, or 40% gain. That's 12.9 is not a very high gain. But anyways, it could have just been one or two condos maybe sold. Wasega maybe doesn't have that many townhomes. So um, as you know, even though the number of homes sold from February 2022 compared to 2021 was down, um, and I think I told you guys the numbers, but I'll tell you again, 657 homes were still sold, which is still a great number, um, but it was up from February, or sorry, January. Jeez. <laughs> it was up from January, okay? So 657 homes sold in February, and in January, um, that was 53.5% less that sold in January. So even though less from last year, still things are moving and grooving from January, which I mean makes sense. People are thinking after Christmas and they're not really into the market. So that makes sense. Um, and then in Barrie, there were 259 homes sold because that was all of Simcoe County, that's 657. So the 259 homes was 70.4% more homes than sold in January. My phone is getting lots of messages coming up. Sorry, we have multiple offers tonight on three of our listings. So my phone is a little hectic right now. So I apologize if my eyes are wandering. Um, so how has the rate hike been in the past week? A lot of people have been asking, so it's been fine to be honest. Um, some people have asked, when's it going to go up again? You know, they hear that there's going to be six rate increases. Originally it was supposed to be only 0.7% up and now it's supposed to be around 1.5% up. Um, so what was I going to say? 
Oh yeah, back in the day when they used to say like, hey, we're gonna put rates up, people would say, oh, it's not a good time to buy. Whereas now they're like, buy before the next one, buy before the third one, buy before the fourth one, buy before the fifth one, etc. So they're opposite from back in the past when they used to just be like, ooh, don't buy. Now they're like, buy fast, buy fast, buy fast. So that is a difference in it. Um, but like I mentioned, I think it was to Sam's question, um, you know, yes, there has been more listings uh, just over the weekend. So it just means that less showings are going on. So again, instead of say a home having 30 to 50 showings, it might have like 10 to 18 because the buyers have more to choose from. So they might not pick yours. Maybe they pick somebody else's. Maybe it's closer to their kid's school, et cetera. Um, and some people have said, you know, maybe we'll wait till April or May, see if there's more inventory. Some people are wondering what will go on like war wise, if it'll affect the market. So some people have sat on the sidelines and that is why maybe there's been less showings. But again, things are still selling. There's still multiple offers, etc. So if you're hoping for no multiple offers uh, and you're a buyer, unfortunately, that's not really the case. Um, so what else is I going to say? Um, back in the day, people used to have big wish lists. So they'd say, hey, I want an ensuite. Hey, I want all brick. Hey, I want to be in this community. Hey, I want curb appeal. Hey, I want an updated kitchen. Hey, I want this. Hey, I want that. And now they're like, we don't care if it's old. We don't care if it's outdated. We don't care if we don't like the layout. We don't care if it's on a busy street, blah, 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 because there's no inventory, okay? So people are a lot less picky, or at least those buying are. Some people are still picky and then they're not buying and they've offered on like 16, 17, 18 properties and not got any because they don't want to give more money because they're like, oh, we have to redo the kitchen, etc. Whereas other people are just getting their foot in the door because they know how much the homes are going up so they can't afford to wait. Um, what else was I going to say? Um, a lot of lenders too have um, seen, the parents have no mortgage, but then they're getting a mortgage to help out their kids. So that is another trend that's been going on a lot lately. Um, you're thinking of selling this July. Um, yeah, you can, Sam. Just I would be cautious of closing dates, right? Because a lot of people want to move before school starts, so they don't want to be moving like September 15th, for example. They don't know where the kid's favorite um, blanket is or their lunch pail or what have you. So it's fine if you sell in July, but just be prepared. Most people want to move in August. They don't want to move, again, like right in the chaos of school. There is still people that move in the fall, like um, spring is our busiest market, fall is our second busiest. Fall is not less busy, it's just a shorter window and it tends to be either people that don't have kids in school yet, don't have kids, or they're staying in the same school district, okay? So that tends to be the people that move in the fall. Um, uh, got it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know it offhand, I'd have to pull up square footage and so forth, Sam, but um, I'm sure it's lovely. Okay, what else do we have for you? Um, I feel like there's more, there is more. Okay, so the average in Canada, okay? So the average in Canada as a whole has gone up $29,400 in from February, from January of 2022. That's all of Canada. So even like buck fuck, oops, <laughs> buck far places, um, like 18 hours north, etc. cetera, average 29,400, they went up from January, 2022 to February 2022, okay? And then in the past year in all of Canada, not just Simcoe County, all of Canada, the average home has gone up uh, 180,700, okay? So obviously that's why I say that, you know, the non-picky people are just getting into the market because obviously majority of people don't make $180,000 a year. So if they're like being picky, 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 and then the house that they didn't even like went up 180,000, they're like, well, we made 20,000, you know, at our job or saved or whatever, so they can't get in. So a lot of people are just, um, you know, buying even if they don't like some things about it, okay? Um, what else? Um, so more than half of the cities under the Canadian Real Estate Association, which is CREA, has seen more than a $20,000 increase in one month. That doesn't mean that every single month is going to go up $20,000. Obviously, as more inventory comes on, then you know the buyers have more to choose from and so forth, and then the sellers aren't in as much of the driver's seat. It is still going to be a seller's market because of the lack of inventory, but um, not as crazy as in, say, for example, February when there really is nothing to choose from, okay? Um, hi, Brad. Thank you for popping in. Hi, Mary. Um, okay, so where went up the most uh, from January 2022 to February 2022 is Oakville. They went up $128,000, which is crazy, which is only 8.5%, but $128,000 um, is a lot when that is more than the average person in Ontario makes a year. And that home, not that home, but homes in uh, Oakville went up that amount in one month. 
And then the average home in Oakville, just as an FYI, costs 1.645. So if you have those kind of funds and you want to go to Oakville, feel free. Um, and then the highest annual gain from 2022 February, from uh, 2021 February was Oakville again, and they went up 465,000, okay? Crazy amount of money, which was 39.5% gain. Uh, sorry, I was reading comments. Um, okay, so the another high place that went up was the GTA. So GTA went up 33%, which was $314,700 on the average home. Again, people, their average uh, price in Ontario that they make per year is not that amount, even dual income, but the home is going up that amount, okay? So that's why I said most people are just trying to get into the market because they know the homes are going up faster than they can earn uh, or save, and the average sales price in GTA is now over 1.2 million, 1.259,900 to be exact, okay? Um, I seem to have a lot today to talk about. I didn't realize I had so much. Um, okay, so there was just a poll done of 2,275 people and 83% said they were concerned about the pricing of homes. 82% of renters said they don't think they will ever be able to buy. 88% think that the government should put some limiting you know, um, ceiling on sales price of homes like, hey, this home will always be under 900,000 or 500,000 or whatever. 75% um, of people think that builders, every time they build a new home or a new condo, should have to build some kind of subsidy living, whether it is, you know, apartment in the basement that's subsidized or, you know, a whole build, building that's subsidized. They build 75 condos and they have to build 12 that are subsidy um, related, etc. And 29% think Doug Ford is doing a good job in relation to real estate, okay? Um, if you live somewhere that commonly floods, just as an FYI, I'm just saying this because the other day in Lafroy it was flooding, which is a part of Innisfil. Um, so there are 44.3% less home sales when areas flood, and on average they take 19.8% longer to sell. Okay, just as random facts for you guys. Um, next question comes from Marion Oral. So Mary said, do you know when the next rate hike is supposed to take place? Um, I do. It is April 13th. Um, so if you want to mark it on your calendar or buy before then, tons of people are trying to buy while their current 60 day rate is in hold and then it'll go up again, um, again, April 13th. So I don't know if it's going to go up a quarter percent or how much it's going to go up April 13th, but it is going up again. April 13th, or at least they're going to make an announcement. Like their announcement might say, Hey, it's going up one. They might say, Hey, we're not going up at all or might go up 0.5, or I really don't know, but April 13th is the day, okay, Mary? Thank you for asking. Um, what else? Are you a glass half full person or a glass half empty person? So, um, again, more studies. They did a study with um, just shy of 2,700 men and women over the age of 52. Don't know where they got them, why they had to be over 52, but they did a study um, and it was an 11 year study, which is a crazy long time. But there were some people during the study that passed away and you were more likely to pass away from coronary heart disease if you were pessimistic. So you guys should be happy out there and not always thinking of negative doom and gloom. I think of Eeyore and um, Winnie the Pooh. Um, there was also another study of 5,100 people and it showed you're twice as likely not to have heart disease if you're optimistic. And then there was a study um, at Harvard, which was over 7,000 people that they studied, and it said that you're 73% less likely to have um, heart failure if you're optimistic. So obviously they all have different numbers, but they all basically say the same thing, just with different percentages. Um, next question comes from Brent in Wasega Beach. And again, if you guys have questions, feel free to write them. Hi, Dad. How are you? Dad, you can talk to Eric. Eric is on here. Um, sometimes my dad has conversations with Scotty or people, but look there, now you can talk to Eric. Um, okay, Brent in Wasega Beach. Do you think with continuous rate increases, we will see less and less bidding wars? Um, thank you, Brent, for asking. Yes, but to be honest, before COVID, we saw bidding wars, and even before 2017, we saw bidding wars. So even in 2016, there was bidding wars. There wasn't like 18, there wasn't 23, there wasn't 34, but there was like two to five in 2016. Um, but let's just say a home then was listed for 450, it would sell for like 468 or maybe 485 max. 
And then obviously you've heard numbers of more recent bidding wars. So, and it's not saying like, oh, prices are gonna go back to those 400. So let's just say right now somebody wants um, 900. So they list 699, they get around nine, maybe 905, 915, 888 or something like that. So in the future, they, as there's more inventory, et cetera, they will just list, for example, at 899 or 910 or 915 or 919. So they will just adjust. So yes, there will be less bidding wars, but doesn't mean prices are going to plummet. People will just list differently, okay? So it's all just a part of um, changing and altering as needed to in the market. Um, hi, Caitlin, how are you? <laughs> um, oh, hi, Arian. You just, well, you're typing right now, so Arian, so you can just type hi to Eric. <laughs> um, okay, so the next thing is people, um, obviously, I already did, Caitlin, the um, real estate stuff, but I still have questions. But people obviously want just, like, connections, right? So in the UK, there was this couple, um, they were in their 30s, and they're, like, after, you know, years of working from home and you know being isolated and not going out etc they wanted to start a group so they started a group on facebook called i think it was talk and walk talk the walk and they just you know posted it and said we're going to meet at a certain spot we're going to do like these icebreaker games then we're going to walk around sometimes look at monuments sometimes just go for a stroll etc so the first few times they had like a handful of people and now it's been like over 500 people and now they have like a megaphone <laughs> Um, so it just shows that people really want that community. They really want to talk to people. Um, they've been in isolation, etc. So I just like that they were thinking outside the box and trying to get people together and friendships and so forth. So I thought that was cute. Um, okay, I'm going to do another question and I see Sam has a question. Um, okay, where was I here? Dun, 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 dun. I said Brent already in Wasega Beach. Yeah, I did. Okay, so um, Jasmine in Aurelia. So Jasmine Aurelia said, we do a rent to own, but the owner is saying he's taking his first right of refusal and selling to somebody else. Can he do that? We have lived here for three and a half years. Um, hi, Jasmine. Thank you for asking. That is really unfortunate. But to be honest, I don't know. So under, if you were to buy a home regular in real estate, it's under the Ontario Real Estate Association. The forms are the same every single time and we can't change things. Like we could cross things out or we could add things in a schedule. But when people do rent to own, they often have their own forms that are you know, made up by a lawyer or they've purchased them online, etc. So I don't know what is in yours. I don't know if in one part it says like first right of refusal, the seller gets to sell it to somebody else. I don't know if you missed a payment and it says if you miss a payment, they get to sell it to somebody else. I don't know what it is. Um, I really hope that's not the case because that would suck paying for three and a half years and then they sell it to somebody else. So I hope that that's not the case. So if you can take a copy of your thing, uh, your agreement to your lawyer, that would be the best bet. I'd be happy to look over it for you if you want, but you can of course ask a lawyer who you know probably has a better um, idea of that. But if it was on the Interior Real Estate Association, I could tell you all day about it, but because they have their own forms. Same like new builders have their own forms. Same like power of sales. Power of sales don't have their own forms, but they add like 45 pages at the end of ours. So I could tell you, you know, other aspects, again, in our forms, but not in those because they could have changed it. Um, how is the area in Crystal Beach Road? That's where I live right now. I want to demolish then build. Um, it's on the Water City service. Um, Crystal Beach is very good, Sam, so it doesn't flood there, for example. And I think I mentioned to you last week I have two there as well. So I can tell you all how that works. There was one on the street that sold 2.4. Obviously, depends if you have 50 foot of frontage, um, 30, 35 feet of frontage, um, 66 or 100. Um, so it just depends. And then obviously what kind of square feet you want to build. Um, so, But I could talk to you about that after if you want. Um, <laughs> there, see, Arian's talking to you. Um, super cute. Okay, next thing is I feel like they're always thinking of something. So there's a guy in um, Toronto, and he's 33, and he was thinking of, like, shoes ending up in landfills or what have you. So he invented this shoe, and it has an apple seed in it. So in between, like, the shoe and the sole, which is all biodegradable, by the way. So when you're done with the shoes or whatever, you're supposed to bury the shoes, and then within three years, so between the, sole, the shoe and the sole, there is fertilizer, don't ask me how, and an apple seed, and it grows an apple tree. I don't know. That's what he did. And supposedly it takes three years for the shoe to biodegrade, and then it can start. I just feel like they come up with new things all the time, but obviously they're thinking outside of the box and trying to be better for the environment, just like that RV thing that was solar. Um, I hope you guys have an amazing night. Sorry for all my all-over-the-placeness and my brain not functioning. 
but it's just hard because my phone is, um, there's so many calls coming on and um, just messages from agents because we do have, like I said, the three offers tonight, three multiple offers, holding offers. So thank you guys for popping in. No worries, Sam. Um, thank you for popping in. I hope you have a magical March break. Stay kind to one another. Do not judge other people. There are always people that are going to be in a better place than you are, but there are always going to be people in a worse place. So just don't judge. Don't judge yourself. Don't judge others. Live your life. Be a kind human and have an amazing day.